With the energy issues Europe and UK are currently facing, an aging national power grid that is showing signs of vulnerability, and energy costs increase nationwide, many are looking at renewable power options that they can integrate directly into their home. In this video, I'm going to show you the Lycan 5000 setup that I've been using for the last three months to power my office, which has really given me a pretty good perspective on how it performs, and I'll also show you how I was able to easily set it up for myself. I'll then go through the details and the specs of this unit, how it stacks up against the competition on the market, the pros and cons, and I'll finish with some other final thoughts. Now, if at any time during the video you wanna check out the items that I'll go over in the video, I'll post a link in the description and comments section below. So let's jump in. Off-grid setup. Let me start off by showing you a brief overview of what I've been powering daily in my office over the last three months with the solar panels and the Lycan setup. Now, I powered my work PC, my monitor, my internet. Also been powering my portable air conditioner. Additionally, I've been powering my studio during filming as well. For solar panels, I originally had 1600 watts of panels that I had set up on my patio roof, but I recently swapped those panels out for six 320 watt Renogy solar panels, bringing the total wattage to 1920 watts of solar panels. Additionally, I added an eight foot long grounding rod into the ground and then I connected the lichen to it. To connect this all up in my office, I simply ran a 20 amp extension cord around my office wall and into my office. Now I plan on in the future running power cords through the wall here shortly to allow me to plug in on the other side to different devices that I test. Now, over the last three months, I've been able to run my entire office minus the ceiling fan lights, of course, from this setup. While by no means am I pushing this setup to its limits, it does give me a pretty good idea of its capabilities. Details plus testing. In this segment, I'll cover the basics of this setup. Plus, I'll show you how well it performs after running it through several tests. Let's start off with the most obvious feature of this unit, the metal box. The primary feature of this unit that really separates it from almost every other solar generator on the market is that it is designed for outdoor use. It has an IP55 rating. And what this means is that it is protected from limited dust ingress. Plus it's protected from low pressure water that may come from any direction. While obviously it's not waterproof, it can operate if left exposed to rain. And it has a filter on the back door to clean the air the fan pulls in while cooling off the batteries. Now, after this device has been sitting on my patio for the last three months running 24 seven, as you can see, the inside is completely clean and has no bugs or any other debris inside. There's a sense that the case was probably built originally as an oven and then later repurposed to serve in this current configuration. All of this, of course, adds to the overall weight. It comes in at a whopping 265 pounds. While it does have caster wheels to allow for mobility, this is not something that you would easily toss in the back of your vehicle if you had to head out of Dodge. But as opposed to my whole home battery backup system, which weighs 660 pounds, it's obviously more transportable. The next unique feature is expandability. The Lycan ships with two 48 volt, 50 amp hour batteries, or roughly 4.8 kilowatt hours. This is expandable up to a total of 19.2 kilowatt hours. And at the moment, I have one additional battery added on that's stored on the side in a standard tote that I picked up at Home Depot, which gives me roughly about 7.2 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. And this is done through an expansion connector connected through a port on the side. And these batteries, they have a life cycle of 4,500 cycles or roughly 12 and a half years to 80% capacity. So what does this mean after charging and recharging them 4,500 times? What it means is that you'll still be able to store about 80% of their original capacity. They'd still operate just fine, but they won't hold as much power as they did when they were brand new. The same concept uh, really happens with your cell phone. After a year or two of usage, the battery just doesn't last as long. It's still good to use, but it runs out of power faster than when it was new. The other advantage of this modular setup is that you can swap out the batteries. One other interesting feature about these batteries is that they're self-heating. So if you operate in an environment that gets very cold, these will operate just fine. And when it comes to using this to power devices, you have two power outlets on the side. You've got a 20 amp plug-in and a 30 amp plug-in. This can handle a total output of 3,500 watts with a peak of 7,000 watts. 
I just run an extension cord off the 20 amp plug into my office and power what I need on the extension cord receptacles on the other end. As far as charging it, it can handle a whopping 4,400 watts from solar. It can also handle another 1,800 watts of charging from an AC source, such as a wall outlet. Additionally, you can charge it both from the grid and solar at the same time. Since I've had it set up, I have almost exclusively been charging this from solar and only charged it from the grid a couple of times. It can also function as a UPS system, meaning that if you have it plugged into the grid while powering other devices, if the grid goes down, the batteries will take over powering the devices plugged in without turning off. One of the great aspects of this device is that it can be tied directly into your house. By having this set up, you can run a cord from the Lycan to a transfer switch, which is then tied into your house panel to run critical loads such as maybe your refrigerator, some wall sockets, and important lights. While I have a whole home battery backup system that already handles all this for me, if I didn't have that, I would probably consider the Lycan for this purpose. On the side, you'll notice that the Lycan has four MC4 cable adapters to plug into. And I have three panels connected in series, powering one of the sets of MC4 plugins and another three panels powering the other MC4 plugins. In October, while I'm recording this video, I've been getting as much as about 8.72 kilowatt hours per day from these panels, which is more than enough for my office's needs. As far as running tests on this, since it has no DC output, we can only really check the AC output efficiency. What I did is I simply put a heavy load on it, keeping track of the watts with a simple kilowatt meter, which allows me to divide the measured output on the meter by the total capacity of the battery. After disconnecting from the solar panels, I ran the battery down while powering my office and air conditioner, and I was able to get a whopping 96.3% output efficiency on the inverter, which is honestly the best that I've ever seen for these type of devices that I've tested. And I'll post a link to my spreadsheet where I collect the data from the various units that I've tested over the years, allowing you to compare how this stacks up against the options on the market. Plus, you can see how long it can power various devices by using a calculator we added to the spreadsheet. One last feature worth pointing out is a connection. It has a Bluetooth module that will allow you to connect to an app on your phone to read data on the inverter and batteries. Additionally, they recently rolled out a new device called the Renogy One, which allows you to connect various Renogy devices to the internet so you can view the information over an app remotely. And this has really allowed me to monitor the status no matter where I am and view past history on performance. Of course, some in this community are rightfully concerned about the potential of external hacking. Since Arenergy's data is read-only and nothing can be controlled remotely, everything on this is controlled with physical switches. So it's really not a concern that I have for this setup. But obviously, if you are concerned, just don't connect it to the internet. Comparison. I'll do a more detailed breakout video in the future where I compare the mid-sized solar generator market. But here are the main points showing the difference between the Lycan 5000 and the other two primary options, the EcoFlow Delta Pro and the Blue Eddy AC500 Max. For starters, the main selling points of the Lycan is that it is designed for outdoor use. And this is evident in its metal case and its IP55 rating. The other options would need some type of enclosure built for them if you plan to keep them outdoors to prevent dust buildup and exposure to the elements. The Lycan can be easily open and repaired if any of the parts break or if the batteries need replacing. The other options are enclosed systems which would require advanced abilities to fix them. Renogy sells these individual components on their website. And the Lycan can not output 240 volts though. So if you need 240 volts, this is definitely not the right fit for you. The Lycan really sits right under a fully integrated whole home setup, which allows someone that wants to set this up themselves to be able to do it, which is something I've achieved by adding the panels to my patio roof, and then I ran an extension cord into my office from the Lycan. Now in the future, as I mentioned earlier, I do plan on drilling a small hole in my office wall and then running a cord out directly to the Lycan and other de uh, devices that I test so I can plug in directly instead of an external extension cord. Final thoughts. I've tested so many of these types of units over the years, and this one's a bit of a beast. It's very capable, it's well-built from an endurance standpoint, 
It's designed for expansion and it can be repaired if an internal part of it breaks or you want to replace any of the batteries. Something people ask me about all the time when I do these type of videos. Think of this as a DIY setup that someone professionally built for you already. And if you were to source all of these internal parts, it would come to roughly about the same price, except they threw in a large metal box and they provide shipping in the cost. This unit as a mid-size solar generator option really comes in right under a whole home backup option. When I had my whole home solar and battery system set up, I hired professionals as I had to go through permitting and all that. And I didn't really want to try that on my own. I decided to leave that to the professionals. Think of this as a simpler version of what I covered in that other video, which I'll link to up in the cards above and in the description section below if you want to check that out. But yet it's still very capable and it's something that isn't really hard to set up on your own. If I were to connect this to my home via transfer switch, I'd recommend hiring a professional though. Otherwise, the approach I did with extension cords, while not necessarily by any means a long-term solution, it works, especially if the power were to go out. One quick side note, if you do hook it up to your home, you may be eligible for the 30% federal rebate that is available this year for solar system hookups like this. Now don't quote me on this, but it's definitely something worth looking into. I will be upfront with you that this entire system that I have, it's obviously not cheap and it's clearly very expensive. That is not lost on me and I don't wanna just merely gloss over that. I consider myself very fortunate that companies send me these type of products for testing and I'm very appreciative. I do these videos primarily though to educate the community so you know what options you have available if you're shopping for something similar to this and if it meets all the requirements that you have, then at least you know the options available. So of course it begs the question, is this the right fit for the prepper community? Something like this. I think it checks a lot of boxes that I know is important to this community. It's portable and I will preface that by saying with a couple of people, a ramp and a van or a pickup. It's not an individual, you know, you're not gonna be pushing this down the street or throwing it in your bug, uh, bug out bag. Uh, it can be tied into your home to power critical loads. It's expandable and it is repairable. And I know these are all important things for this community, so it checks off all of those boxes. Let me know your thoughts, your feedback and questions in the comment section below. I try to typically answer those within the first hour of releasing a video. As always, stay safe out there. What you doing? Huh? What are you doing?